What's going on everybody, TG here, back with another video. Thought I'd start today off by talking to you guys about my top three buys and my top three short positions that I'm currently in right now. Before we start, just hit that like and subscribe button. Only about 15% of the people that watch these videos are actually subscribed, so it'd mean a lot if you guys could hit that subscribe button. But anyways, let's jump right into this video. Starting off with the buys, I think we cannot ignore the fact that Amazon is my top buy. I obviously have the most equity in Amazon. And if we go down, we can clearly see I have a lot of bullish positions, especially long term, including this call right here, which is a leaps call that is deep in the money, which allows me to sell covered calls on Amazon and make premium as well. Unfortunately, I picked the wrong time to write a covered call. We're currently down on it as of right now, but hopefully Monday it will start down a little bit and we can get out of this position either even or with a small, small gain. So Amazon obviously has earnings on February 4th that I expect them to absolutely blow out of the water and even a potential stock split that could send this stock soaring. I've told you guys many times I really, really like Amazon based on their revenue streams. It's not just e-commerce like everyone thinks. They have their AWS, which is their highest profit margin. That's their cloud computing and cloud storage software. They also have their ad revenue, which I think is going to be up a ton this year. They have a bunch of other subsidiaries such as Twitch, Whole Foods, Audible, and a bunch of other amazing things as well that I really like for the company. The company traded sideways for about seven months. As you guys can clearly see, if we look back from July 10th to now, um, it basically traded exactly sideways. We had a bit of a breakout earlier this week. Now, Amazon, obviously my number one choice, and I want to hold this long term, especially if they do do a stock split. But I've talked about Amazon so much. Let's go into my next position that I absolutely love, and that is Ali freaking Baba, the Chinese Amazon. This company's been on an absolute tear recently, and we're actually up a solid 2300 bucks in our position, but we can still get another 2600 out of these, so we're just going to let them go. There are a bunch of put credit spreads. I made a couple videos about this, but essentially saying that Alibaba is going to stay above these current prices, and you know I think it's pretty likely, very likely that it will. I don't even see this company going under 200 again. I wrote a lot of these when it was around 220, 215. Uh, really, when it took a big hit about a month ago, when it was really trading, you know, down after the whole Ant IPO failure, and then obviously the Chinese um, president basically making an example out of our man Jack Ma. Uh, like I said, I love Alibaba. They have insane, insanely high profit margins around 30%. They also have, like I said, the cloud storage, which is amazing. I made a video about Alibaba. If you guys want to check it out, go check it out on the channel. I talk a lot about it and go into depth a little bit more on that. But like I said, Alibaba is solid and they have a lot of the same things as Amazon, except for a couple of things where they differ, such as they don't have the fulfillment centers, which <clears throat> allows them to have higher profit margins. And um, they have a lot more users because it's in China. Now, my third and final long position is Facebook. I met, made a couple of videos about Facebook and why I really, really like Facebook, but essentially I think Facebook has really changed the way people use social media and they're using it in a way that they really profit from. Ads are becoming the biggest stream of revenue um, and Facebook is about 97% of their revenue comes from advertisements. Now, Facebook obviously got hit hard recently. When we look at where it was in August, it obviously had a big, big correction You know, just these past couple days. I mean, this stock was 245 and now it's at almost 280. That's a huge percent increase. This was after the whole um, capital raid in Washington, D.C. and a lot of backlash against Facebook and big tech. And like I said, I try not to get political. Um, I don't want my emotions making the choices in my investing. I want my brain doing that and um, you know, the business side of my brain, not the emotional political side of my brain. But I like Facebook, super high profit margins and... They're basically a monopoly. They're not going anywhere. I don't see anything getting as big as Instagram and WhatsApp. People don't really know much about WhatsApp, but WhatsApp is huge overseas. You know, we have phones and stuff here, so we use iMessage, but in other countries, WhatsApp is the biggest thing. And and I didn't really notice that until I actually talked with my teammates who are all international students. And every single one of them, that's their main way of communication is WhatsApp. And especially if Facebook monetizes WhatsApp, that thing is just going to go through the roof. So Facebook's the number three. Um, long position for the next couple months, um, but let's go into the short positions. Number one short position, we have to go with Tesla. I've been short on Tesla for a while. 
and I am going to continue to be short on Tesla. We are currently down a lot on it, and I'm actually worried about a couple of these positions. A couple of them, these are call credit spreads, by the way, essentially saying the stock will not finish above this certain price by this certain date. We're in trouble on these. We're in trouble on the 820s, and we're in trouble on the 835s because it's above it, and those, unfortunately, are next week. So I'm, a little, I'm sweating a little bit right now. I'm not going to lie. Um, but I hope earnings, it does dump and goes below that. So that's my biggest short position right now. I have about $11,000 into this short position. And my reasoning behind this is I just think it's so grossly overvalued. You know, it's a PE ratio of like over 1,700. Um, it's just, it's unjustifiable to put a market cap of, you know, $820 billion on a company that doesn't even do a billion in profits. Um, and I understand forward looking and all, but and I like Tesla. I really do. I think it's a great company, but it's not worth eight hundred and twenty billion. You know, it's barely worth half that in my opinion. But <clears throat> uh, it's my biggest short position right now. But moving on to our second biggest short position is GameStop. Man, I know Wall Street bets. You guys are gonna absolutely hate me on these short positions that I have. But I'm obviously down a lot on my uh, GameStop short positions, considering the fact that I did this two days ago on Thursday, and we all know what happened. Right after I did that, around here is around forty-five dollars a share, and now it is up about sixty-one dollars a share. So I'm obviously down a lot on that. Basically, I'm saying that it's not going to go above fifty, and we saw what happened with that. I also have one for um, fifty-five as well. So we're gonna have to see. Obviously, this is just getting ridiculous how much this stock is continuing to go up for no reason whatsoever, other than a potential short squeeze that is going on. But you know, just based on that. It's not really sustainable, and I think they are a dying company. They're basically a blockbuster, and I understand that they're trying to transition, but I think that ship has sailed. It's a little bit too late for that when we have things like Amazon, Walmart, uh, Target, and all these other ones like Best Buy that basically just make GameStop absolute, obsolete, my bad. Um, but that's my, that's my other short position. And then my number three biggest short position right now, it's a small one, but it is still something. It is my Netflix. I did this right after Netflix posted their earnings and went up a lot. Um, so we're actually up 108 bucks on it. Not bad. We're already up 25%. Honestly, if it goes up to 50%, I might as well just close this out there for March March 19th. Essentially saying that it's not going to go above $640 for this one and $650 for that one. Uh, so we clearly have a, <laughs> a pretty long way to go for us to be in some trouble. But I figured after the earnings, I mean, they, they had... To over 200 million subscribers, which is huge. Um, but they also missed on their earnings. And, you know, a company like Netflix, there's going to be more competition that comes out and there's going to be other things that take away from it. And, you know, their whole business is they have all their eggs in one basket. And when you have all your eggs in one basket and there's other players in the market making come ups, it's, it can be difficult uh, to have, have a company like that, especially, you know, one that's valued at like 260 billion. So, you have to watch out for that, and obviously, like I said, they having 200 million subscribers is huge, but at the same time, it's not exactly sustainable for the future because of you know innovation and other companies that are coming out with that. Obviously, Netflix will be the best and always will be the best in the streaming service, but there's a lot of other ones coming out, and if they step their games up and Netflix kind of slacks, it could it could be um, a big drop off for them. But essentially, those are my positions, guys. That's what I'm long on. That's what I'm short on. It's been working out pretty good so far, as you guys can clearly see. Uh, we're up $20,000 in the past three months, and all time we are up about $33,000 in a year and a half of trading. Not bad. Obviously, we were doing a lot better, but um, you know, this when we started doing our whole theta, like I said, this is after this is playing the whole options game, buying calls, buying puts. You know, works out big, loses big, works out big, loses big. And like I said, it was on the 26th of um, June when I decided to go into theta and try that. And since then, we went from being down $4,000 to being up $33,000. So it's working out pretty well. We're sticking with our gut. We're sticking with our theta. And um, we're using statistics to our advantage, statistical edges, to get the best possible deal and the best return on investment. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you guys are getting something out of these. I love the support that we've had recently. And I know some of the stuff I do is controversial. You know, you guys are big GameStop and Tesla fans, and I understand that. But like I said, I don't let my emotions dictate my investments. I try to make the smartest possible decision. Hey, I'm not going to be right every time. I'm going to mess up. But overall, we like to see you know an uptrend and that's exactly what it is. There's times where boom, it doesn't work out good. But overall, it's a pr pretty consistent uptrend. Um, 
But yeah, guys, I hope you're doing a great day. Hope you're having a great time. Enjoy this weekend. We got a big two earnings weeks coming up, especially Amazon on February 4th. So that's what I'll be looking out for. But uh, have a wonderful day. Talk to you guys next video. Bye.